Welcome to another History Mystery. I'm Mimi, and you may have noticed that we've been posting a lot of dog pictures on our Instagram and Facebook pages this month. Here at the History Center, August is known as Dogist, the month where we celebrate our canine citizens by posting some of the many pictures of dogs from our collection. Thomas County has a long history with dogs, from loyal pooches to highly trained hunting and sporting dogs. But we've also had some famous dog owners. Let's meet a famous Thomas Villian who had some puppy love. Some people are almost famous, but at birth, Beatrix Hoyt was already famous. Beatrix was born in 1880 in Westchester County, New York, the youngest of four children. Her father, William Sprague Hoyt, was from a wealthy family in Rhode Island his textile business was worth over $3 million when he sued his relatives for his inheritance. Her mother, Janet Ralston Chase, was the daughter of Sam and Portland Chase, the lawyer turned governor of Ohio, turned senator, who served as secretary of the treasury under President Abraham Lincoln, and had a hand in creating the Free Soil and Republican parties before being appointed to the Supreme Court, where he presided over President Andrew Johnson's impeachment trial. But I digress. Despite what should have been a great start in life, Beatrix's father suffered a major financial setback after the economic panic of 1873. He also suffered from health problems that kept him far away from his family, leaving Beatrix and her siblings to be raised almost solely by their mother. The Hoyt family lucked out when their mother, Janet Hoyt, bought a share in the Shinnecock Hills Golf Club of Southampton, New York, becoming a founding member of one of the best-known golf clubs in the country. This opened up many learning opportunities for young Beatrix during a time when society had its doubts about women in sports. As a young teenager, Beatrix signed up for golf lessons. I'm going to ask a question that might be sacrilege to some of our listeners, so bear with me. What was so great about golf? Why would a young socialite want to take up the sport? Well. Golf was the new, cool, it sport of the late 19th century, especially for ladies. But to understand why, let's back up a few years, and I promise we'll get back to the dogs soon. The game of golf as we know it today was codified in the 18th century. Before that, it was a game played and likely invented in Scotland, where legend has it that players came up with the game after using sticks to hit pebbles off the side of cliffs. Even with gender norms keeping most women busy at home, a few, mostly of the noble class, were able to play the game. In fact, Mary Queen of Scots is often considered one of the first female players of golf. As the years passed, few women got involved in the sport. In 1738, the first unofficial women's golf tournament took place between two women in Scotland, whose husbands served as their caddies. News of this event spread across the Atlantic Ocean with reports of Charming Sally winning the game. Almost a century later in 1811, the first official women's tournament took place in the town of Musselburgh, Scotland. The fisherwomen of the town were known to play manly sports, like soccer and golf, and had even formed their own golfing association. The winner of the tournament received a fishing basket and a shawl with second place receiving two handkerchiefs from Barcelona. But what about over here in the United States? Most of our citizens didn't have the leisure time of the people in the United Kingdom, as they were busy expanding the territory of the United States, dealing with infighting that led to the Civil War, and generally just trying to survive from day to day. That didn't leave much time for sports, especially for ones that involved expensive special equipment and swaths of single-purpose land in order to play. Things calmed down after the Civil War, and men's golfing groups were formed. After all, we're better to make social and financial connections than through a club. Unintended. By the late 19th century, things were changing for women. For centuries, popular science had discouraged women from involving themselves in sports outside of light activities like stretching, throwing a very light ball, and walking, but not too fast. 
But the tides were changing, and doctors learned that exercise would not cause a woman's internal organs to move out of place, but instead would benefit their bodies and minds. With a new lease on life, women formed their own sports clubs, including one of the first American golf clubs formed in 1891, the Shinnecock Hills Golf Club. As a member, Beatrix had access to private golf lessons taught by professional male players. At the age of 16, Beatrix competed in her first major competition, the second annual U.S. Women's Amateur Tournament. Despite being so young, Beatrix won the tournament, making her one of the youngest female champions in the history of the competition. And not only did she win that year, she won the next two years as well. So now, let's get back to the dogs. After her amazing winning streak was broken, Beatrix played for a few more years before retiring from the sport at the old age of 19. After her father's death, Beatrix and her mother moved to Thomasville, where they bought a house close to the Glen Arvin Country Club. Beatrix became a golfing instructor, mentoring future legends like Mary Lena Falk. She also pursued her other passions, like art. And what was her inspiration? Her beloved dogs. We have a few examples of her work in our collection, including this gouache pinging of a terrier and, a crowd favorite, this little cocker spaniel dish. Beatrix spent the remainder of her life in her new home of Thomasville. Her mother passed away in 1925, leaving Beatrix with their home, which she turned into her personal art studio. Later, she moved her home address to the Wright House on Fletcher Street and opened her own antiques and art shop with Thomasville native Julie Wright. The ladies ran the shop for many years, while Beatrix continued to enjoy her favorite pastimes of golf, art, and of course, hanging out with her canine companions. In 1963, Beatrix passed away at the age of 83, but her legacy as a female golfing pioneer and dog lover lives on. You can see more of Beatrix's pictures by searching our collection online or by following along on our social media pages as we celebrate this month of August. And be sure to leave us a like on this video. While you're there, look for our upcoming events to stay in the know about all the fun things we have planned for this fall. Thanks for watching!